Well, we have been celebrating skilling the last month, and tonight is the night. It is the night, yes. Your history here, after wait, tonight. Isn't it? Well, you know, I'm not dying and well, going know, six feet under. Like, you know, I know, but you're uh, leaving uh, us. I, How are you feeling? You know, I, I, I had mixed feelings about this. I, I'm going Change into uncharted territory. Yet? Oh, Micah, I'm so, you're, Demetrius is such a marvelous uh, choice. Yeah, He's going yeah, to be yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> he is. And you know it, too, Micah. <laughs> Whatever. You know, it's, but, guys, I'm not going away. I'll okay. be back and do things. Well, I, I want you to stay here for a few minutes. All right. Because, all um, right. But do you know that for the last 20 years or so, I've sat next to a legend, oh, the God. legend that is Tom Skilling. Some might say that WGN is the house that Skilling built. Oh. For decades, he's been there for you and for us. He's so much bigger than the station and gigantic in all of our hearts. What a bittersweet night this is. It seems to be happening more often that I'm saying so long to a beloved colleague that means the world to me. But we all know that time brings about a change, as my mother would say. And it's time now for Tom to move on to more meteorological adventures. Tom Skilling's dedication, honesty, and loyalty is bar none. He's always the smartest one in the room, and yet one of the most self-deprecating people you'll ever meet. For 45 years, we've laughed and cried with Tom. So for our one last hurrah, photojournalist Mike D'Angelo and I spent a very cold and wet Saturday with Tom, who talked for hours about the love of his life, his career at WGN, and what has been his biggest fear. I grew up as a little kid going to the Jersey Shore, and I love the ocean. I think we all have an intimate relationship with the ocean. I mean, our species sprang out of the primordial oceans. I'm genuinely fascinated by this atmosphere of ours, the way it affects people. You know, I've always thought the weather person has a really interesting place in the uh, television newscast. I mean, we deal with a subject every night that in one way, shape, or form affects every one of our viewers. You know, I've had a pretty good life. I've always found life pretty exciting. Something. See you later. Thank you, guys. See you later, folks. <laughs> what is it about weather that excites you so much? You know, I'm not quite sure. My parents could never figure out what they had done wrong to get a son who was interested in weather. They wanted, a, they would have preferred a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. I had a psychic tell me one time that I'd been a ship captain in a previous life, and I'm not sure I believe all that. But I'll tell you, I. It's an explanation. But there's good news tonight, and that's in the form of a very strong, mild flow of Pacific air that may push Chicago temperatures into the 60s. Were you ever intimidated when you walked into WGN when you first came? Because you came from Milwaukee, right? Yeah. I didn't think I was ready to come to WGN. Why I, not? Uh, I was so young. I, I was like 25. Bitterly cold northerly winds will blow us uh, across our area tonight. We'll be down to about four above by morning. You know, when I started at WGN, there would be reports from uh, some critics, and they'd say, uh, you use terms like jet stream and dew point. Nobody knows what that is, and they don't care. I've always assumed that our audience is intelligent. Two jet streams merge over our area, and when that happens, the pileup of air up around 30,000 feet leads to a subsidence or a descension of the air. As the Meteorology and weather forecasting has come farther in the last 50 years than it had in all the time back to Aristotle, 340 BC. We see the, the atmosphere unfolding uh, today as never before. And in this cool air, I love meteorology. We live in an era in which climate change is on people's lips. And you weren't on board at first. No, no, I, you know, I'm actually kind of a good one to talk about it because I understand the people who say, I don't believe this because I was there early in my career. I've been able to see in 50 years of doing this, the atmosphere doing things I'd never seen it do before. Anybody who believes that climate change hasn't had an impact on humanity had better do some reading. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you. You do know you're a rock star, right? Well. Oh, rock star. 
I, I'll never accept that characterization. I, I'll tell you one thing. I'm a survivor. I've somehow managed to navigate this dog-eat-dog business and managed to survive, and nobody's more surprised about this, Micah, than I am. You know, one of the best places to take in all of the beautiful Alaskan scenery in a unique way. And I think I would have not worried about getting fired every day. Your goal is 100% accuracy and nothing short of that. And when you fail, uh, nobody is more disappointed when a forecast busts than you are. Really? Oh, my gosh. It, it's a night. Do you go home and worry about it? Oh, absolutely. When you get on and you say there's a snowstorm coming until there's a layer of snow on the ground, you don't sleep. You go to bed and you hear the traffic noise, the tires on the pavement and all, and you know when it snows, there's a different sound to it. It's softer and all. And then you dare to open up the blind and see whether or not the storm has materialized the way you think. You like snow, don't you? I do. You know what's interesting about snow is the way nature puts these storms together. Contrary to popular myth, I mean, we don't have that many really big snowstorms. We've had something like three or four 20-inch snows in our entire history in Chicago, and our snow history goes back 139 years. When they brought me home from the hospital, there was an ice storm, and they always would kiddingly say, Maybe it was that ice storm in Pittsburgh we brought you home in that uh, got you wet into the weather. I don't know. Oh. 1952, February. Right. Yep, that would have been me. There's my father. You look a lot like your dad. Oh, God. I know. And there's my mother. Oh, my God. I watched my mother going through this. She started working on this, and she would have them spread out on the floor, and everything she did, she did meticulously. Uh, oh, my mother. Uh. <gasps> I... <gasps> Maybe we shouldn't have done this. Oh, got a little job. Tell you. Uh. You know, I'll tell you, she, oh, she was a good woman. Oh, God. I would pick my mother up when she was in assisted living. And my mother said to me one day, people know you. And I said, well, you know, Mom, it's, it all goes to show when you take an ugly face like this and you put it on a powerful medium for a couple of decades, uh, people are going to start recognizing you. Here on top of the Sears Tower, the days are actually a little bit longer. No kidding. The sun rises a little bit earlier and sets a little bit later. We talk about your ups and downs of your life. What about the weight loss? Oh. That was a tough time for you when you were big. You, you thought you were too big. Oh, I, I didn't think it. I knew it. I, I was morbidly obese. Boy, have we got a hot spill there. That's going to run through next week and into the following week. Tonight, I would have viewers write and say, you're a heart attack waiting to happen. And we say that to you not to be mean, but we're worried about you. I had a father who had a terrible stroke. He was comatose for a year, and I was on the same path. My gastrointestinal surgeon performed a miracle in that surgery. They go in and completely rearrange the plumbing. And I lost 125 pounds. It's the best thing I ever did. Where's your happy place? Oh, I'll tell you. You know, I've been going to Alaska since 1980. I love it. I've been going out to Hawaii. It's just beautiful. I go out there and I walk the beach and I love the waves and all. It's a, it's a magical place for me. Will that be where you spend more time as you retire? You know, I, I'll ne I'm not going to leave Chicago. 150 years, the Chicago trip, you can literally take the end of the night. When you get older, you start reflecting back in your life and you say, did it matter? Out itself and a tornado will drop right out here. Pool of air we call an atmospheric block. What could be a historic snowstorm. That's moving to think that you, in some way or shape or form, contributed to people's knowledge of these severe weather events. You're kind of giving that up now. Yeah. 
I'm going into uncharted territory. This is really going to be strange. Um, I've worked since I was a teenager. Any regrets? No, no. I've worked with wonderful people. It's been a marvelous career, and I don't think I would have done a lot differently. I've been a very lucky person, so no.